Technomancer for zero point fuel. All the coils are on, all the connections are soldered. Uh, I went through and double checked and made sure I didn't have any loose. If this would have been loose here, it wouldn't be moving this part. It would be sliding inside of that. I made sure all the connections are good. And then because I'm using old coils, I wanted to ensure that I didn't have any shorts. So what I would do here is check the conductivity uh, between the positive and the negative input line and you have to make sure it's polarity sensitive here so um, that means that right there that I don't have a short between those two now flowing back the other direction because there are diodes involved uh, that's a diode reading there um, so the current will flow back the other way, but we're pushing it through this direction, so we are good. And because the chips are older, I'm going to go to here. Oops, I'm going to go this way at that point. And uh, no conductivity that direction. So all the connections seem to be good. Now, when I'm getting ready to run the motor here, I'm going to pull all the grounds, I'm going to check each individual coil, and then we're going to fire it up. But what I'm going to do right now here, this is probably the last video before you actually see it running. So uh, it's laying on its side, but what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to weigh the whole motor for you on the scale. And uh, we'll, we'll see how much the whole unit weighs all together. Got the motor sitting on that. The whole motor together with everything is 76 pounds. So we're looking at 76.8 pounds for the whole motor. Basically, all we've done really is extended from four inches to five inches. That gave us a little extra room around the coil if you wanted to use a larger coil um, g-force on the forum was the first one to mention that and uh, we adopted it so basically extended this uh, this is the basic uh, coil now a lot of the coils on the new machine are from the cart motor so they don't have this but this is the same one that's in the PDF only difference is it's a little it's five inches instead of four inches so it's basically the same now the resistors are 5k resistors now we have people in the forum who are running 240 or trying to run 240 uh, I will be running to over 240 on the large motor which is over there we found some chips that have um, uh, a defle deflection circuit because they were designed for uh, CRT screens and they're 750 volts they're rated at 20 amps and they have a deflection circuit built in so the amperage of the trigger is deflected it's reabsorbed it, it so that might help run the higher voltage because it comes to a point where the the trigger voltage uh, will overload the chip and burn out the chip because there's too much trigger voltage flowing in when the coil is energized not when it first is initiated there's two stages the first stage is when the magnet passes a coil induces a current that triggers the coil and that pops the door open slightly and then when that happens a current rushes through the coil which causes the the trigger to fully open for a millisecond or so and then collapse well at that point it could be frying the the uh, circuit uh, if you're running high voltage without the right resistance but the deflection circuit they designed was for a CRT screen so it's dealing with extremely high voltages so that should work and the next motor that we build will include those new chips so but this one I'm trying to keep it, I'm trying to get to the generator guys. So I'm not making a lot of changes. I'm just running through this as fast as I can. In case you guys haven't seen this, this is basically transformer plates. 
that have been cut. It's kind of a crappy job, but uh, it works just fine. It's already ran on a motor for years, so it's just been adapted for this. So, as you can see here, everything is just tied in here, so it's not soldered right there. And I create a loop over here, and then I tie the, the center one to it, and then I wrap this wire around it, and then hook in the, the ground for the trigger circuit, and then just heat that up. And here's the other side of the trigger circuit, right here. So this comes out of the center of the coil. This is the center of the coil, and the outside ring is tied to the ground. So it's actually opposite of the actual, because this is the hot on the coil. So the current is flowing, hooked up actually backwards from the circuit. So, so this is the resistive ground, and then that's tied directly to the ground. So the current is flowing the other way. But anyway, um, so this, this is the center, and then the other side that comes out over here after the coil is wrapped, that's hooked to each individual center. So that's it right there. That is the coil for most of our projects. Now the voltage and the type of chip and the type of resistance is really what we're working on here, guys. We're trying to come up with a perfect match for that. Um, have a couple people actually have told me they're going to design a circuit board for it and uh, I planned on doing it and I will be doing it um, unless somebody else has manages to do it and they're willing to offer it for free um, I will be doing it after I've smoothed all this out I'm sure what we're going to be running on so that it can be soldered in and then the chips are the only thing that would be interchangeable this is the same thing this is the same kind of coil but instead of having this uh, thicker polycarbonate, which is a little more expensive, I'm just using scrap plastic so that I could uh, get through it pretty quick. All right, that's the coil specs. Got the motor mounted. It's actually moving the whole frame. And if I did have an issue, I would probably have to put a brace, put a brace across here. Uh, right now, I, when I run it, I want to see if there's a vibration and an oscillation in it. So, for now, that's fine. But it may take a little more reinforcement before I hook the generator on it. So, all I got left now is to go through my batteries, clean everything up, and move, move them around a little bit. I pulled four batteries out of the bank for the other motor, which we moved to the second location. And I have to remove the outriggers down there because the wheel no longer hangs off the front. This used to be the cart motor frame. And hook the caps up. So, a little bit more to do. I should have it done today. I know you guys are dying to see it run, but I am too. I want to see this thing run. I want to see if this 10 magnet concept will work with the coils this close together. The old cart motor, there's no way I could put those coils that close together. It's set up so I can remove them though. I remove every other one and that'll give me uh, the spacing that I had on a cart motor. So uh, the most I would have to do is pull a few coils off of it. If this don't work and add the, the other six magnets, there's only 10 magnets on it right now. And I'd be able to add the other six put it back up to 16. I'm hoping that won't be necessary. I'm hoping that this spacing will allow that trigger to fire and collapse before the next magnet comes. And the way that's going to prove that is when the motor's running, it should run faster than 1000 RPM. If it runs faster than 1000 RPM, that proves that theory out. And the next thing to do on this size motor, after I build the generator, would be to put larger magnets with the same spacing. So, got a little more work to do, as you can see, fellers, but this is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel. The next video.